Hello, my friends. Perlo Wisdom here from BPOW Fix. And we're doing Fan Duels Season Total Over Under Frolic. We just did Carolina Hurricanes. And we do this on the fly, by the way. I don't prep. You think I'm prepping shit? No. I put it on. I show you a couple stats. I give you my over under. And uh, there's a lot of frolic. We look at some analytics from Jay Fresh. Uh, who I find is one of the finest analytical people in the land. And, uh, yeah, I give you the over-under, and we'll, we'll, I'll kind of give you an expl explanation why. Today we're doing Columbus Blue Jackets. So let's take a look at it. Before I do, don't be afraid to subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm a professional handicapper. We're up 113 units in MLB this year, over 500 units since the beginning of 2022, all sports. That's insane. And you can get it for free right now if you comment in the comment section. All right. Let's look at, first we'll look at FanDuel. We'll look at uh, what the odds are. 74.5 points is what they're projecting or at least what they're saying, the over-under. They're placing the over-under at 74.5. Uh, under being uh, minus 125 and over being minus 102. And we'll look at, oh, yeah. this is there, So they're going to have to take a pretty big jump from last year. They had 59 points last year, so we're looking at a 15-point jump in a division that has really improved a lot. Carolina has, New Jersey has, the Rangers, not so much. Uh, Islanders, it's maybe. Pittsburgh, sort of. I mean, but there has been improvement in that division. Uh, now, that being said, you can make a case that, uh, well, no, even in the Atlantic, Buffalo is improved, Ottawa looks like they probably are improved, Detroit, um, with Boston maybe taking a step down. So, Let's look at some of the moves they did. We'll look at. We'll go over here to my, everybody's favorite in the land, cap friendly. Um, and look at some of the players that played from last year. Some of the players that they added, which is mostly on defense. Um, Johnny Goudreau, and I'm not going to look at the analytics here, but I'll just tell you this: Johnny Goudreau had a diabolically bad season defensively last year. Um, and this is one thing I find kind of cool about analytics. Actually, let's do that. It is, it is kind of interesting when you look at Goudreau and what happened to him last year and how analytics maybe doesn't get, you know, every... Oh, not that's definitely not it. Analytics ha still has a ways to go, I think, in some ways, but is probably better than anything else, especially these analytics. 97% even strength offense, even strength defense, 9%. Look at the drop here. From the year before in Calgary, playing under Sutter, a huge drop. And I will contribute, I will contribute that to the fact that Columbus was playing from behind all the time. And when you're playing from behind, when any player is playing from behind, defense is secondary. You're trying to score. And I think that just happened so much that it affected his defense. And I think you could see that jump up possibly this year because you are looking at uh, even Boone Jenner. I'm not going to look at all the analytics here, but Boone Jenner slipped. Kirill Marshenko, uh, he's still young and he's just learning the defensive side of the game. But actually, he wasn't bad. He actually was better defensively than Goudreau by quite a bit, actually. Um, and he has he's a shoot-first guy, so that's pretty impressive to have a young player like him. Let's look at him. Mar Marshenko. See? 70% even strength defense for a 23-year-old. Um, he doesn't run the offense, but if he's playing with Goudreau, he doesn't have to. And if Goudreau gets back to his more defensive ways, all of a sudden you're putting together a line that can do some damage. Now, the way they're going to be able to do that 
is they're going to have to go to their defense, which we'll go to in a second. Patrick Line has never been good defensively. I don't think he ever will. Last year, he was worse than ever. Uh, Matt Ro- Roslovich isn't either. Kent Johnson is just learning. He's not very good as well. I mean, there's some depth issues, but there's a lot of growth opportunity when you're talking about Kent Johnson. Uh, well, I don't know if Adam, they have Adam Fantilli in the lineup. I'm not sure if he'll actually make the team or not. But you got Alexander Tessier coming back. Didn't even play last year, taking care of some issues in his personal life. Um, and Igor Shinnikov, um, who actually is is growing in, in both sides of the ice pretty well. But there's a lot of question marks here on the, the growth of this youth that is here right now. A lot, 22 and 23 these are times, these are ages, like when you're getting into 24, 25, you quite often see a big pop in a lot of players. At least some of these players probably will pop. Borderline, I mean, decent fourth line. So it looks up. It looks better than people may think in Columbus. And, of course, we can't go on without talking about the fact that Babcock is going to be playing in up coaching them this year. Now, he has always been an aggressive forechecking coach. His teams have not usually been very good defensively. They he 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 generally has been an offensive guy. He has sort of relied on players naturally being defensive players. And uh if that's the case like when he was in Detroit, he had many of those players. Uh, Datsyuk and Zetterberg and, of course, Lidstrom and all those guys like that. So if he doesn't have that, he generally runs an offense much like Florida did year in the, did last year in the playoffs. So if that's the case, you could see more offense out of Columbus. Um, now, the big story and the big question mark for me is going to be what happens on defense. Zach Wierenski was out almost all year last year. Huge loss for them, and we'll look at his analytics. Damon Severson getting picked up from Philadelphia actually has very good, is very good analytically. And by the way, most of the analytics that I look at here matches my eye test. Analytics help my eye test, for sure. I can look at it and go, hmm, what am I missing there? But generally, it matches my eye test. Um, Ivan, Ivan Provorov from Philadelphia um, is a little underrated, actually, a little underappreciated coming out of Philadelphia. And then Adam Boquist, who is mostly a straight offensive guy. The problem being, and we'll look at these analytics with Jake Bean and Eric Goodbranson, it's brutal. In fact, no way I'm playing Goodbranson over Andrew Peak. Not a chance in hell. And then you still got Cole Sillinger, who I'm glad is in the AHL right now growing his game because he really needed it. Um, and Nick Blankenberg, who should be playing instead of Jake Bean. It should be Bl- Blankenberg, Peak, and then Gubranson. And we'll look at why as we look at the analytics for these players, which we're about to do now. Okay, let's go to our defense here. And you're going to see that they're... Remember, we're talking about a 15-point jump here. From 69 to... Uh, To 74. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into the analytics here for uh, the goaltending, but um, Elvis Mizzlickens had a really struggled. Now, I, I was listening to Davidson, the president of Columbus there on um, on uh, Sirius Radio, and he seems, and he's a really smart dude. He said it was so hard on any goaltender in our last year because we just were leaving them wide open. And there's a really good chance that Merz Lakins can bounce back with guys like this. Even strength offense, he's a very offensive guy that I don't think was utilized properly in Philadelphia, honestly. I think he had, there's more offensive upside, even though he's only 29 years old, for, for him. And even strength defense, really good. In fact, it jumped up from the year before, probably playing under Tortorella, right? Um, but this is a solid pickup that they picked, That solid pickup. Um, this still says he's a UFA, but he was signed. I can't remember what he was signed for. You can, that's playing on a second pair. 
that can't do any, uh, he can't do anything but improve the defense, I believe. There's just no doubt about it. You bring Wierenski back. Look at the numbers on this guy. It's insane. This guy's freaking elite. Zach Wierenski is an elite defenseman, and they lost him last year and had a young defense. Now you're bringing in a Severson who you saw is well above average. Zach Wierenski is elite. And, oh, I forgot now the other two. Oh, Provoroth and uh, Boquist. We'll look at them as well. And Provoroth, also from Philadelphia. So they know each other. That, well, that's going to be a, a benefit. Um, because there's there might be early struggles with Columbus. A lot of movement, a lot of different line pairings. Now, he his projected war, look at this projected war, 21%. War means wins above replacement. It means how the percentage of players that would be better in the role that he was in. Two things you need to look at here. He played top pair, probably not where he's supposed to be playing. He won't be playing top pair in Columbus. Also look at his offense and defensive uh, uh, analytics for the last three years. Defensively, he's kind of remained around this 40 percentile part, which isn't that great, especially when most people consider him a defensive defenseman. But actually, the year before, he ran the offense really well. It looks like he just has lost confidence. Lost confidence. And I don't think that's because of Tortorella. I just think it's because he has been asked to do too much too young for too long. And now he's going to have a breath of fresh air to be in Columbus where he doesn't have to be the guy. Um, and he can be exactly, he can be more to what he is. Hopefully maybe get a chance to play on the power play bit. That builds confidence. And I think you're going to see a rebound out of Provorov here. Um, I think it was a good pickup. He's shown in the past that he can be, uh, you know, right around a 70 to 75 even strength percent, even strength offense producer and around 40 to 50% even strength defense. So there's nothing wrong with that for a second power. And he's a big boy. He can do a lot of physical things. Just this alone tells me that somewhere along the line, Columbus is going to be better. Uh, one thing I wanted to look at, and remember what I said about there's no way I would have Peak instead of Good Branson. Look at this. Oh, that's Gudis. No. Gudis is a beast. Three percent projected war. That means ninety-seven percent of the league. That was a, that's as a second pair. If you drop him down to a third pair, I would say he's probably about ten or fifteen percent. But fifth, that means that seventeen, set ninety-seven percent of the league's defensemen would be better than him as a second pair defenseman. His even strength defense, and he's supposed to be a defensive defenseman, is absolutely horrible. It actually dropped last year, plus his offensive ability dropped. He's actually a better offensive defenseman than he is a defense, defensive defenseman. But people see big, physical, strong, and they say, oh, he's a defensive defenseman. Now, it doesn't mean shit. If you're overhitting all over the place, you're not in your right position all the time, you pinch too much, and all of these things are true of Eric Branson. and you have no hands to get the puck out of the zone, and a low hockey IQ, this is what you get. And he's getting paid $4 million a year. That's what keeps him in the lineup, I think, more than anything. But when you look at a guy like Peak, it's not that bad, but at least he has an 81% defense, and he's only 25 years old. Yes, he has very little offensive ability whatsoever, no doubt about that, but he can play a decent defensive game. I would take it over good, good Branson all day. And then, of course, Blankenberg, who is smaller, which makes it a little difficult. But, geez, he's just so much better than they are. No doubt about it if he's healthy. Blankenberg's in the lineup. I don't care how big Good Branson is, to tell you the honest truth. Not when you're that bad. Big doesn't mean shit if you can't play. All right? So are they going to get over 74 and a half? All this being said, I don't think I, uh, there's too many question marks in the forward depth. I think they're going to get struggle early with Babcock in the system that they have to do. Not 
first like five games, but then after that, he's going to be very demanding. They have a lot of young guys. This is going to be a feel out year for them. I think their year is more than next year, but I do think that they play better than they did last year. I would say something like 70 or 71 points. So give me the under on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Have a great day, everybody. Okay.